What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Fightcast. I'm your host, Darian Terry. You know what's so crazy? Is that fight with Charles Oliveira versus Kevin Lee. That fight was fucking ridiculous. The reason why I say it was so ridiculous is the way it went. Um, I believe it only went like two rounds. In the second round, all of a sudden that guillotine came out of nowhere and just was devastating. Absolutely devastating. It was decapitating the way he just took to his neck like that. I couldn't believe it. Oh, that poor guy. Sorry, the English voice came out. So here's the crazy thing about it. Kevin Lee was choked unconscious yesterday and actually kind of came back from the dead and started going ahead and re-engaging with Charles Oliveira where the fight was happening still. Um, it seems like a lot of people have an uproar about this. Uh, Game Bread and Jorge Masvidal said something about it. Uh, basically, like, that was some bitch shit and, like, you should be banned from the UFC for it. Um, I think he just went unconscious. Um, he did tap. And then it looked like he was tapping. Went on conscious and then like basically came back and just didn't know what, what happened. And so he started re-grappling. But no harm, no foul. I mean, I think that happens to a lot of people that go on conscious. They, they really don't, don't know what just happened. They still are inside of that moment before they went out. <laughs> so it's it just like one of those ordeals. I, I just don't think that uh, – I don't think he knew what was going on. I don't think he was coherent. And, and I think that could happen to people that get knocked out. You know, they, they, they go back to a moment of, in time where they're still fighting. So it's just like one of those ordeals. So it, it, he did forget that he tapped. <laughs> I think that happened, that does happen, though. That, that's that's happened many times before. Yeah, but crazy shit, crazy stuff, though. Okay, let's break down the statistics of that fight, though, because that was a crazy-ass fight. All right, so Kevin Lee fight, Charles Oliveira fight. Okay, just go ahead and let's break this down like Per round, son. All right, so round one, uh, basically, it was 72% of significant strikes landed for Charles Oliveira versus 51% for Kevin Lee. There was 15 out of 29 strikes that landed for Kevin Lee uh, that were significant strikes. Charles Oliveira with 13 from, from for 18. So 13 out of 18. So he was way, 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 way more like, like, sufficient to go ahead and actually take the strike and go ahead and make it happen. So then we go to total strikes. 15 out of 29, 16 out of 21 later for Charles Oliveira. So again, way more what He was way more accurate. The accuracy was ridiculous right now for Charles Oliveira. These significant strikes are truly landing. You could actually see it. Here's the fucked up part. And, and when the first, when the, when the start of the second round came, it was basically the same as the first round. Charles Oliveira was putting that octagon pressure on him. Uh, Kevin Lee was literally fighting behind the line. He was fighting by the cage the whole time he was fighting. It, it That sucks. That sucks. And it looks like he was already getting winded by the second round itself. He was still out there. He was still in the fight, but he was getting very winded. Um, did go three rounds. Did go three rounds. Went to uh, the third round itself. But uh, going to round two, Kevin Lee, 16 out of 37% for significant strikes. Charles Alvarez, 28 out of 42. He picked it up a lot. 66%. 66% for significant strikes. Okay. Um... And that same second round, Kevin Lee was able to go ahead and get two out of two for takedowns. And so, like, like he was able to still land takedowns. There was a lot of rolling around out there. Um, but he really didn't establish a lot of things. Like, basically, a lot of strikes, as you can see, he still got outlanded in the strikes department, even with two takedowns landed. So that's the thing. And uh, Charles Ivory was scrambling a lot. De La Hiva doing all types of, all types of great jiu-jitsu. He's amazing at jiu-jitsu. He was doing all of that from underneath. So there's really nothing that Kevin Lee could do to really get a beat on him. They go ahead and start dropping bombs like he needs to drop bombs and win that second round. He was still outstruck even though he was the person that was on top. So that's pretty crazy, you know, to think about that number. So then you go to the round three and very few strikes were landed because the takedown happened so fast. And when the takedown did happen, it was immediate submission. So Kevin Lee went in. We got 10 out of 14 strikes that were landed for him. Pretty good percentage, 71. Charles Oliveira, two out of five landed. But again, that's uh, you can't even look into those numbers because the fact is, once that guillotine was strapped on, 
It was night night. It was curtains. It was very much curtains. So 10 out of 14 strikes. That's pretty good percentage for Kevin Lee. It really didn't tell tell the actual tape of the fight, how what was happening uh, basically before that happened. Um, two out of five, 40 percent. All of a sudden they land in that guillotine position. Charles Oliveira is right there. It's very tight. He has no arm in the guillotine. It's just all all neck. And so yeah, there's really nothing that he could do. What sucks. Is that yeah? That did happen. He got he went on concert so hardcore that he woke up again and was still fighting. And so yeah, it sucks. But that that type of shit happens. Uh, it just comes with the game. But yeah, great fight all together. There's some really good fights on this card. Um, boy, Damian Maya, Damian Maya, and uh, Gilbert Burns was fucking on fire. I love that fight. Um, Damian Maya was controlling him, was dominating him. Um, especially, uh, took his back inside the first round within like the first minute and 30 seconds. This fight only lasted one round though, uh, because Gilbert Burns has got some fucking bricks. He's got some brick ass hands and he's young and he moves really well. So, um, inside that first round, just four out of seven strikes landed for Damian Maya for a significant 13 out of 16 for Gilbert Burns. Um, there was uh, two takedowns by Damian Maya. He got both of them. Okay, then we got Gilbert Burns that basically was just 14 out of 17 out of total strikes. Okay, 14 out of 17, that's really fucking good, right? Okay, um, the thing is about it, when it wasn't the striking department, Gilbert was getting owned. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, how long can he t keep this up? You know, because this, this happened in the first minute and a half, he's already got his back taken. So it's like one of those ordeals, but yeah. And in a grappling, in a straight grappling match, like Gilbert would be in so much trouble. Gilbert Burns would be in so much trouble, but it, luckily, this is MMA. <laughs> it's crazy, but great fight. What's next for Gilbert Burns? We shall see. Hmm. I like a Gilbert Burns, Michael Chiesa fight. Gilbert Burns, I'm going to tweet that. Gilbert Burns, Michael Chiesa. I think that really works out. Chiesa's looking for a fight. He called out Kobe. Um, Gilbert Burns calls out Kobe right afterwards. So, you know, I think... I think I really think that those two should fight each other. Uh, Renato McCona, uh versus Demir Hadzo. Hadzo Kick, some crazy ass name, but uh, Hadzo Vik, Hadzo Vik. Submission rear naked choke in the first round, 44 seconds. Um, damn, that was crazy. Renato was all on him. He was fucking on him. So I don't know what's going to happen with that whole situation. Um, like, he was just, I don't know what's going to happen with Renato when I say that. What's going to happen with him after this fight? Because, um, man, he called out um, fucking uh, Paul Felder. Called out Paul Felder. Now he wants at 155 pounds. He wants to, he wants to tie. He said, I'm seven at 145 pounds. I want to face the top seven. I want to face number seven at 155 pounds. So he called him out. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, Renato, is, he's a... He's a He's a, he's a weapon, though, man. He's a weapon. He could be a fierce motherfucker at 155 pounds. Do not count this dude out. He literally, he could be a fierce dude. So, yeah, his only loss, real his real notable loss was just to Jose Aldo. Um, and, but, you know, he's at 145. So he's probably sucking a lot of weight. That's why he went up to 155 pounds. So, we'll see exactly what happens with that. But, let's talk about the future here really quick. <laughs> because this is, what's so crazy is that Tyrone Woodley, was supposed to go ahead and be headline in this next card on Saturday. Uh, just a UFC Fight Night card. Well, his opponent looks like he may have pulled out of the fight. Which is crazy to me, right? Um, his opponent, uh, Edwards, Leon Edwards, may have pulled out of the fucking fight. It was supposed to be in England. But all, because of all this coronavirus shit uh, that's going around, they may not even have the fight anymore. So, right now, Tyrone Woolley was supposed to fight Leon Edwards. This fight probably won't even go down because they can't have it in London. They're not having it in London anymore. And Leon was like, I can't have my people travel. Leon Edwards said, I don't know if I can travel and leave the country because he has a family and his team has a family. Understandable, but bro, the show, the show must go on. So, Kobe Covington has stepped in. He has stepped into the fold. He entered the chat. Kobe Covington has called out. Has called out. Out Tyrone Woodley, and he wants to go ahead and step in. I'm gonna go to uh, MMA Junkie real quick so you guys can see this drama that's going down right now. Um, 
MMA Jackie. So, this is what's so crazy. Willie says Covenant was just kidding to f with fight offer. Covenant offers to fight Willie on six days notice. This is crazy right now. So, we're going to see exactly what happens here. Mmm. If Woodley fights Kobe. Ooh, shit. I would love to see this if Woodley fights Kobe. Like, yeah, it, it would be. It would be such a day. It would be such a day. Um, if Willie actually fights Kobe, that would be so ridiculous. Here's the thing. I don't think it's a good fight for Kobe, though, right now. Because he's literally taking those six days notice, and he just fought fucking a, a beast in uh, Kamaru Usman. Now, that was about three months ago. But at the same time, though, dude, you're going to go against a, a guy that's been in camp. Been in fucking camp. Literally has been in camp. So, Tyron is like revolutionized his training too. Training a whole bunch of Muay Thai shit. I don't know if it's a good fight for Kobe right now. <laughs> like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're talking about somebody that's been literally fucking training for this event the whole time. Okay, so you, you don't want to fight. You step in on six days notice, bro. That could be a that be that could be cray cray. So we'll see exactly what happens. Uh, man, I like this, though. I like the fact that he's going to go ahead and step in. So, on this card itself, though, um, it wasn't really, like, all a bunch of hardcore dudes. Like, before that fight, for instance, like, co-main event, Danny Roberts versus Nicole Nicholas Daldy. Um, third one was Jack Marshman versus Kevin Holland. Darren Stewart, Darren Stewart versus Marvin Vettatore. Vittori, Jack Shore versus Gerardo De Freitas. So UFC Fight Night Willie versus Edwards. It didn't have a whole bunch of fucking like notable names and like titles, contentions and shit like that. But it's a lot of fighters basically inside that area, inside of London that were, you know, going for it, you know. And so it's pretty crazy. It sucks that, you know, this fight got called off. Paul Craig versus Ryan Spann. Uh, Mark uh, Diakaisi versus Jai Herbert. That's a good fight, man. Um... Dude, that Mark, uh, that Mark Diakaisi, dude, <laughs> he has a crazy ass name, uh, Diakaisi, Th that dude's a monster, bro, uh, so, he actually, uh, yeah, he has a win over Lando Venata, Joe Duffy, uh, yeah, he's won his last two fights, uh, so, Mark Diakaisi, Mark Diakaisi, yeah, he's won his last two fights, and so, Lando Venata, that's a really good, that's a really good notable victory right there, and plus Joe Duffy, Joe Duffy's a pretty, yeah, he's pretty, he's a monster, man, Joe Duffy's good, so, with those notable victories and stuff like that, like, it's really hard to go ahead and say that this dude isn't, like, really ridiculously good, um, let me see, he's not, he's lost to Dan Hooker, um, Jackar Close, uh, so, yeah, he's had some, he's had some, some notable losses as well, some notable victories, and so, like, he's definitely still, he's in the runnings of things, but, um, as of right now, let me see, <laughs> they call him Bone Crusher, but yeah, motherfucker's 14 and 3, man, um, Mark D. Keezy, so, crazy shit, he actually, out of his 14 and 3, uh, you know, he's on a two-fight win streak, his three losses came back to back to back, so, you really had to, like, get up and, like, take shit over, so it's crazy shit like that. Lose three fights in a row. But, also, on this card, yeah, just to talk about Darren Stewart versus Marvin Vettatore. That was going to be a pretty good fight. Darren Stewart's a big motherfucker. Uh, Marvin Vettatore, he's fought Stylebender. Um, man, yeah, he's fought Stylebender. He's last. He's actually fought Stylebender. Val Israel's Adesanya lost. B. Cesar Ferreira. Real good victory right there. Um, and B. Andrew Sanchez. So, two good victories. Now he's got this Dar that Darren Stewart. Darren Stewart's real tough as well. Um, Darren Stewart's fought some pretty good dudes. Uh, but he's still young in the UFC, though. He's still young in the UFC. Uh, he fought Deron Wynn. He's actually uh, has a win over Deron Wynn. Um, that was October 18th of 2019. Fought uh, Bivon Lewis. Beat him. Lost to Edmund. Edmund Shabazin. Crazy stuff, man. Yeah, he's got some uh, notable wins and losses here. Edmund Shabazz. Charles, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Charles Bird beat Eric Spicely. Yeah, beat some good people. 
We'll see what happens with this one. I don't know what's going to happen with this one, dude. Yeah. But crazy part about it is we don't know what the main event holds. Okay, because, um, you know, you got Tyron, he's looking, he's ready to go, but we don't know if this fight said to even happen. Leon Networks is pulling out as of right now. So, we'll see exactly what happens with this. I hope this fight actually does happen with Kobe. Ooh, if he steps in, it's going to be fucking ridiculous. Okay? But we'll talk more about UFC Fight Night, Woodley versus Edwards, which maybe changed the Woodley versus someone else at a latter time here on UFC. Not UFC, this is Fightcast, bitches. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace, love, and happiness.